So one thing that uh, a lot of people don't realize about chemistry, a lot of people think chemistry is like, oh, let's mix some potions together and blow it up, okay? Yeah. That's not, that's, well, that might be fun, but that's not really what most chemistry is about. Chemistry is about creating something that's never been made before and seeing if it helps the world somehow. So one of the uh, first things that many people tell me when I say that I'm teaching college chemistry to kids is, um, wow, uh, I hated chemistry in high school. And um, this is always a really sad thing for me to hear because we shouldn't be creating a subject that instills so much fear and anxiety in people. It really should be a subject that fills us with excitement and a desire to connect with our surroundings. We live in a high-tech society that is based on modern materials, modern medicine, and to have so many people alienated from this subject, it's really a, a troubling thought. It shouldn't be an elite subject that only people with PhDs uh, have access to. I really think that everyone from a very early age should get this and should feel uh, confident and comfortable with it and be able to connect to this amazing high-tech society that we live in. I usually never get anything like this in school and I like science and technology. I just thought oh this is a, like the ground and this is the sky but now that I know biochemistry I can like tell like what atoms are in what like the ground, the sky, the walls like if there's iron in the walls or there's metal in the walls we get to learn about atoms, molecules, and we go really in depth about it. I learned about a mole, like not the mole that digs in the ground, but if it was a carbon mole or oxygen mole or a neon mole, and they'd have a certain amount in each one. I really liked it and like, cause the fact that we're at the same of all like people who are much older than us. The octet rule is when an element has two electrons in the first orbital and eight electrons in the second orbital. That's what we call an octet. Since neon doesn't have any bonds left, then all of the electrons are happy and they can't bond with any other um, elements. Well, I think it's really joyful to know you're knowing a college education because I didn't know I could achieve all the information I've learned from molecules to pi mole to DNA. So the approach that Dr. Fried is taking with this program really allows the children to use all of their learning skills. He uses hands-on materials, he gives visual presentations, and then he lets them apply their knowledge. And this has really made the kids enthusiastic and excited about this program. You bring in the hands-on and you bring in the pictorial so that they could really understand and break into bite-sized pieces and gain a greater understanding. They're excited about what you're doing, they're excited about the learning, and that kind of excitement is what um, engenders a passion. So you can hear them in the hallway uh, talking about science and talking about biochemistry and talking about the different things that they have made. And that's really true wondrous learning. They talk about it all the time. They go home. The parents are coming to us telling us what their kids are saying and how they're expressing their love of biochemistry. And they can't believe it. The parents are absolutely floored that their children not only are learning this, but understand it. As somebody who took biochemistry one and two in college, I was really fascinated and impressed by how quickly and easily these kids were able to understand these concepts. And not only that, how quickly they understood the relationships between physical and biological function, as well as theoretical and empirical concepts. And it was really impressive to see how they made these connections with only a few classes and in comparison, it took me and I'm sure most college students a whole semester to get these ideas. I remember when I was their age, I never learned biochemistry at that level. Like, what they're learning right now is really gonna help them when they get to high school, college. 
I really want them to be in the realm of STEM because they grasp it like so easily. And you can tell that they are little scientists. So it makes me really happy, especially me being a woman in STEM and seeing other little girls learning biochemistry. Their curiosity sparked whenever there was a new concept on the screen. They were eager to ask me questions and they just wanted to know more. And these are things that college kids do not do. College students, they take this information for granted and they're given a new concept and they learn it. But in comparison, these kids, they want to learn how it's useful for them. And whenever they were learning about amino acids, they wanted to know how many sulfur, like is sulfur common in our bodies? And questions like that, that most college students do not ask. If I had the opportunity at their age to understand or experience science in this way, I think my life would have gone in, on a different track. He's allowing them to experience these ideas and these concepts without fear, without hesitation, and just full of fun. Nobody ever says, oh, do you remember that spelling test we took in second grade? But they do say, remember that field trip that we took, or remember that experience we had. And that is really a hallmark for young children. So if you provide these kinds of experiences, you're delivering something that most adults feel is way over their aptitude. But in fact, it is a real life living experience for them. I'm really excited because I loved biochemistry as a child. It took me a while to understand how bonds are made and how molecules are made and how to balance equations. And so even as an, a grown up, I seem to be learning along with the children. And then when I see things click for them at such a young age, and get excited about the periodic table and then suddenly they want to have a conversation about amino acids, they stop you in the hallway. So that excitement is something I feed on as an educator and um, suddenly biochemistry is now the next cool thing to do. <laughs> Why do they have that specific amount of positive and negative charge? It has to do with this very stable configuration. So they're making um, more electrons to make pairs so they can be like neon? Yeah, exactly. They're trying to attain a noble gas configuration. That, that's, that's what's driving so many things in chemistry, the drive towards a noble gas configuration, yeah. To get a competitive edge, students need many different kinds of educational resources, but what I feel like I'm doing here is not just giving them the content that they need to succeed in the future, but to also give them uh, kind of an inborn passion about the subject, which um, students in, in other kinds of educational settings uh, aren't gonna get that, actually. They may be learning similar advanced material at some point of their life, but what we're able to do here with the multidisciplinary approach is that we, we give them a self-directed drive to learn these subjects, and, and that's what can set students apart from, from the others that are maybe uh, mem memorizing, maybe who are in for the grade. Uh, the kids that you see in these programs, they're not doing this for some grade. They're doing this because they have a, a, a passion and they, they see the importance of, of it and they see that, that they're learning also about themselves. They're, they're learning what are they made of, how are their senses connected to this amazing three-dimensional molecular world. So this one, she's got the charges right. She's got, a deep pro she's got the base form of sulfur which I didn't even teach that to you, so I don't know how you know that. You have a interesting positive oxygen, which is actually technically right. The bonding is really great. I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's really mostly correct. So what's the answer, 342? Can you tell me, so what? What is 342? Um, 342 is how much um, one mole of sucrose weighs, 342 grams. This foundation that they got with biochemistry uh, allowed me to explore chemistry with the other topics like air quality or water pollution or even plastic. Why is plastic taking so long to biodegrade? Is it something in its molecular structure? So I can pose these questions now to my students uh, because I know they have that basic foundation and understanding. There's many moments where 
we are doing our own curriculum and they go back and refer to Dr. Freed's lesson. I can take it with a chemistry lesson, I can take it with a physics lesson, I can take it with a biology lesson. It's easy for me to make those connections with whatever topic I'm trying to do. In fact, it has led many of my follow-up lessons and experiments because we can always go back and say, remember what you studied in Dr. Freed's class? So any concept that I'm talking about comes back to the fundamental unit of matter, which is atoms. Well, I would also say that we're not all cookie cutter kinds of learners. Some of us are predominantly an auditory learner. Some of us are more predominantly a visual learner. And some of us need more of the kinesthetic and tactile kinds of things to help us along. Our approach to learning is to meet all their sensory. So you have your sense of touch, sense of sight, sense of smell. He's presented lessons where, you know, he's brought in vinegar and oil and they smell that, but they can also see why water doesn't mix with oil. And, and so it's a simple experiment, but he connects it at, with them with um, how uh, bonding works and they could see, oh, that's why, because it's hydrophobic or hydrophilic. And you see them using these words that you wouldn't expect a fourth grader to say. Okay, where's your tyrosine? Tyrosine. Great, that's a tyrosine. Guys, this is a tricky one. Would you describe tyrosine as hydrophobic, hydrophilic, or maybe a little of both? A little bit of both. Why is it, I know I'm kind of leading you for this, but why is it a little of both? Why, why is it? Because it has that nitrogen and it has that oxygen. R right, the oxygen in particular is, is, would be classifying it as hydro... Philic. And then the ring is? Hydrophobic. Great, because it's carbon rich ring. Wonderful. One of the things we appreciate with Dr. Freed's program is he was able to actually personalize his program with our school. We've talked to him about our methodology and um, Montessorians use certain tools as well and so he's customized his lesson so that it complements our lessons as well. For example, we have this card and it's a transparency and it shows um, bonding and how um, electrons look for pairs and so we come up with this Mickey Mouse molecule that we call water. Our goal here is to equip them with 21st century skills and with Dr. Freed's program that allows them to obtain those soft skills such as collaborating, teamwork, they're building polymers and peptides together and talking it out with each other. I mean, the room does get loud, but they, you see them engage and they're excited and they want to learn more. When he introduces biodegradable plastic and they're holding the molecule and they're like, so this is that, and that for them is mind-blowing. This is a program that would benefit all students, not just a select few. The benefits that we're seeing with our children go far beyond and after the class ends. They are applying it in their everyday lives. They are showing that this is something that holds great value and it deserves to be used by all students. And we need more sciences, especially in research. There's so much research that can be done on everything, like in terms of developing, advancing uh, health, healthcare, um, biotechnology, cancer, all of that. It's not just uh, elements, it's more than that. Personally, I am now more confident to talk biochemistry. Even though I majored in it, having sat in on Dr. Freed's class, I am more confident of teaching these concepts to children. And if they're curious and excited to learn about something, then let's give them more. In the future, I would like to learn how, to, how cells are made by molecules, because there's DNA in the cells, nucleus, and there's way more in cells that I don't know about, so I want to know about it. Well, I feel like since I know this, I'll be a great student in college, and I'll know I'll be an extra step ahead of everyone else. Part of the Montessori program is to go to the United Nations and speak. Now I'm very confident to speak in front of 2,000 people about climate change, and I'm mentioning the problem of CO2, carbon dioxide, and I learned about it, carbons and stuff, 
all by biochemistry. One of the most important parts of school curriculum is the problem solving aspect. Um, being able to um, look at data, formulate solutions to a problem. This is a great skill to learn in school, um, but for me this was not actually why I got into science. The ability to connect with the world, to understand what am I made of? What makes living things what they are? Knowing the basics of chemistry, that molecules are made of atoms, how atoms uh, connect with each other to form higher level, more complex systems. This is the excitement for me in science. To me, it's the ability to feel that I'm part of the world and we're all made of the same things, actually, no matter what kind of matter we are, living matter, non-living matter, the building blocks are the same. And this is one of the great revelations that chemistry gives us. And in talking to them, many of the students really start to understand this, that, um, that, that there's a connection to, to the world that they didn't feel before they had this kind of molecular and atomic uh, approach to science. This taught me that you can be at any age to know anything. And I'm confident to do anything now I've learned this.